Time to go over Four Kids Winx Club again. This episode is definitely a bit of a ride. <laughs> We're going over episodes 11 and 12 of season 1, and 12 is quite a bit of a controversial one within the Winx Club fandom, but as I'll get into later, you really don't need to worry that much about this version of the episode in particular, but I'll go more into that later. I hope you enjoy this installment of me experiencing the 4Kids version of Winx for the first time. And if you'd prefer to listen to this in an audio-only format, it is also available as a podcast on Spotify, Apple, Google, and there is also an independent YouTube channel that has it as well. So feel free to check those out if you're interested. And before we get into it, hello, I'm Rosie Vision, and I like to look at entertainment through rose-tinted glasses because we all deserve some magic in our lives. And today we're going to get our magic fill through some Winx Clubs, so let's go over the episode, shall we? Watch the dub and open my mind Believe in four kids, time to unwind Can it be true? Let's wait and see If four kids stuck can do everything amazing Rewatching Winx, rewatching Winx, come join the fun Rewatching Winx, rewatching Winx, rewatching Winx Like to have some fun Rewatching Winx Episode 11, Junior League. Before I get into stuff I noticed, things I liked that changed, and things I didn't like, let's go over a quick synopsis of what happens in the episode so you're not completely lost. Flora's plants are out of control. She's trying to study for her exam, but she ends up getting in the way. So she exiles herself to the black mud swamp. The girls decide to help her, even though they were kind of on bad terms before, because they're friends after all. And as it turns out, Flora only needs one more ingredient, the cheerful gladiolus, which is protected by the undines a group of miniature mermaids. The Winx are able to find the Undines, but they are in desperate need of help. Their food source comes from a nearby island, but a monster has recently started attacking them, and now the Undines are running low on food supply. So, of course the Winx agree to help them, but in the process Musa almost gets swallowed by a monster, however she's luckily rescued by Bloom. Once the Winx get to the island, they fall asleep because of a poisonous gas that's being emitted by a tree. The Winx later learn that the monster, and the island, was actually a giant turtle, and he was simply a victim to a parasitic tree, which the Winx then exterminate. After helping the Undines, they graciously give Flora the cheerful Gladiolus as thanks. And that's all you need to know about the episode, so <laughs> let's get into my notes, shall we? So right off the bat, as soon as the episode starts, we get hit over the head with Flora's characterization. Now this was kind of in the original as well, but it was kind of unsaid before, but Stella starts off by yelling at Flora and calling her a hippie while she's trying to prepare for her exam. And I just thought I'd mention that because it's never explicitly mentioned in the original, and I do think it's an interesting choice adding that into this because it's something that kids can, well not just kids, um, just I guess the target audience they were going for would be able to latch on to more, and it's totally understandable why Stella would think of Flora that way, and it's kind of fun that they lean into that aspect of her character a bit. Gives her some personality, and in a way that relates to the world that we're familiar with, but not to the point that it's distracting. Another thing I noticed, although this happens in both versions, is the fact that it's actually Bloom who stands up for Flora when no one else will. Everyone else is super mad with her because of just how much damage her plants are causing, 
And Flora essentially just exits on her own and says that she's going to go to the swamp. And no one tries to stop her. It's Bloom who tells everyone that this isn't okay and that they need to go help her. Which I thought was really interesting because I don't think we really get to see this side of Bloom in the future. She is really loyal to her friends and stands up for what she thinks is right in a good and noble way. And I thought that that was something that really made her character likable. So points for Bloom in this episode, I guess. One change that was a little baffled by at first was the fact that the Undines are the heads of the Black Mud Swamp Junior League, which I had no idea what the heck they were talking about when they first brought this up. It's a group that tries to strive for positive social change in the swamp, which at first was just absolutely silly and strange to me, but... As the episode kept on going on more and more, I understand why they went that way. Originally, the Undines were protectors of the swamp, if I remember correctly, and having them head projects like literacy for butterflies and Pollywog playground improvement, although really, really ridiculous sounding, adds a kind of charm and innocence to them as a species and just adds to the overall lore, so... Although it was kind of silly to me now that I'm grown up hearing all this. In fact, I don't even think just then. I probably would have laughed even when I was younger because who would think that butterflies are in desperate need of learning how to read? But what do I know? Regardless, I actually kind of am okay with that change. I don't think it was necessary, but it did add charm and personality. So, yeah. Speaking of the Undines, there's a musical theme for them that's played throughout it, which I thought was really cute and sweet. I'll play a little bit of it if I can. I just, I don't really know how to put it into words. I really liked it. It used a lot of high-pitched instruments, like I think glockenspiel and things like that, so tinkling bell sounds and felt really atmospheric. And it just has a really innocent and cute sound to it, so I really liked it. Something not really related to Four Kids, but the episode itself, but this um, particular episode is interesting in terms of animation errors. Normally, I don't notice them that much, but it's very, very apparent in this one. Tecna's sleeves just keep on disappearing, and I'm not sure how the animators would forget this. I mean, maybe they were rushed for time. It happens, but there is one point where she only had one sleeve on. Which, I'm not sure how that animation error comes to be, but yeah, look out for that one if you want to look for easy-to-spot animation errors, I guess. But back to the 4Kids version exclusively, another thing that I noticed is that there is a point where a bug freaks Stella out, and she claims that it's a zip bug. And starts panicking, thinking that the bug is gonna give her acne, which definitely was not in the original. And once again, it's a really silly change and not necessary at all, but I think it really does add a lot of character to this version of Winx Club and kind of adds on to the feeling that we're in a completely different world. I can understand why some diehard fans and maybe even the creators would be upset at how much that 4Kids changed the lore, but I think it was all done respectfully to try to enhance it. You can argue whether or not they had the right to do that. Probably not, but for what it is, I think it was handled pretty well. A cute addition for Flora that I guess is more a fun fact or anything, the more you know. Uh, apparently, her ringtone is the sound of birds chirping, which I thought was a really cute addition and suits her character perfectly. I'm kind of all over the place <laughs> with my notes for this one because it does, for the most part, follow the episode to a T. There were even times where the dialogue was exactly the same as the Cinelum version, which really surprised me. So not really too much to say in terms of differences. Um, one thing that... 
I sort of felt as the episode went on is that Tecna's voice actress has really grown on me. When I first heard her when I was younger, it was so different from what I was used to since it was um, deeper and a different accent. It really... I don't know why. It rubbed me the wrong way when I was younger. Probably because I'm quite obstinate to change sometimes. However, I think it really suits her. And I found her voice really charming this episode. There was a bit of innocence yet mischievousness to it. I can't really explain, but I really liked her this episode. And surprisingly, she has a lot of moments to shine in this one, even though it's supposed to focus on Flora. And that's pretty much it. I only have one other note that I wrote down, which is that the witch euphemism has made a comeback. I haven't talked about it for a while, but um, in this version of the Winx Club universe, which is used in place of calling someone a b I am not going to say the full term because uh, one, I don't want to possibly be demonetized. That's not an area I want to go. And I personally don't swear that much and that's not a word that's in my vocabulary, but I'm sure you know what I mean. And for kids, <laughs> I still can't get over the fact that four kids used witch as a euphemism for that. So basically just use it whenever they wanted to say something worse. And it shows up again in this episode. Stella says how she was being a total witch when she apologizes to Flora for the way she acted over the plants. So it's definitely throughout the entire series. I was warned and it is here. <laughs> it's once again super surprising that four kids would do something like this when they're supposed to be trying to make everything really family friendly. But once again, I think it adds a lot of charm and personality. I'm running out of like words to describe it, but I'm sure you know what I mean. So that's all for this episode. So let's move on to episode 12. Miss Magics. Before we get into my notes, here's a quick synopsis so you don't get left behind. The simulation chamber is working again, so the exam in Palladium's class resumes. Stella skips class saying that she's sick, but Bloom discovers that Stella was lying. She's actually been preparing for the Miss Magic's beauty pageant. And at first, the Winks are really upset with her, rightfully so, but they begrudgingly decide to help her. If Stella promises to study for her exam afterwards. Similar to Stella, Lucy is also preparing to win Miss Magics. She wants to win so that she'll be popular and so that the tricks will like her. But Murda isn't completely happy with her decision and they kind of get into a fight. The rest of the episode covers Miss Magic's beauty pageants and the tricks, true to their word, help Lucy become beautiful so that she can participate, but they also kind of just wreck the rest of the competition as well in the process. And due to some weird stuff with rules, including not using magic, Stella ends up winning because Lucy is disqualified for using magic. And in the end, Stella does her test, although woefully underprepared since she basically crammed into one night. And originally she fails, but in this one she doesn't, but I guess it doesn't really make much of a difference. And that's the episode. Before I get into my notes, I'll just have a quick little blurb about how this um, episode is normally perceived. I'm sure I don't need to tell most of you this, but this has been a controversial episode because of, well, I think it's multiple reasons, but for one scene in particular where there is a contestant who is upset because her hair goes from being straight to becoming poofier and in the shape of an afro. And I guess just the way that the Winx kind of reacted to it and also the fact that it was sort of portrayed as she was no longer beautiful and ran off crying. That this is a controversial episode. So basically, I'm just gonna 
tell you how it is. I'm not going to tell you how to think. But the reason why this episode is frowned upon is because it was basically saying that the contestant that we were just previously talking about was no longer considered beautiful. Basically, if you look through the subtext of everything and that make people who have that hair naturally probably reasonably upset and kind of insecure. So that's why this episode is controversial. That and it's just kind of <laughs> all over the place with Stella kind of not at her best and trying to weasel her way through a pageant. But I'll get into it more as we go through my notes, but this version completely changes that because I guess four kids had the foresight to see that that scene wouldn't play out well. And none of the issues that people have for the most part with this episode is present in the four kids version. So if you're someone who has skipped this episode for whatever reason, then I do recommend at least checking out the 4Kids version because I do think there's some interesting stuff that does happen in this episode. And even if we're not talking about the 4Kids version, I personally don't skip this episode because I can totally understand why people are upset by it, but it's still a part of the Winx Club universe and good or bad, just pretending that it doesn't exist isn't really going to change anything. And I personally am of the belief that we learn from history. So I don't personally think that running away from bad things will do anything. So that's my personal take. You can do whatever you want or believe whatever you want to believe, but that's what happens in the episode. And you can check out the 4Kids version if you're worried about that one scene that we went over, or if you don't want to, you don't have to. But anyways, doom and gloom aside, let's get into the notes that I had for this episode because it was pretty interesting. So first off, the episode actually starts with a big laugh, at least for me. Flora gets upset when Palladium uses the term dead planet. She says that she likes to call them planets in need, and Palladium does not care at all. He completely writes her off and pretty much says, interesting theory, then tells her to save it for philosophy class, which, ouch, <laughs> I was not expecting Palladium to have that much sass to his character. I do think he gets that way later on in the original anyways, but I guess in the for his version, we're just going straight through. So no confidence issues with him <laughs> at all. I also felt like four kids kind of diffused the idea of the beauty of pageant in a way that was more digestible. For example, Stella convinces everyone to help her in more of a realistic way. She was totally just being vain and selfish before. She still sort of is here, but it's framed better. So she goes on to explain to the Winx that the pageant is more than just looks. It's also personality and talent. And yes, we've heard all that before. But on top of that, she also says how it's something that's really important to her. And that's why the Winx decide to help her. It is sort of like that in the original, but I just feel like it's framed better here. And it shows that even if you don't completely understand what your friends are into and what's important to them, it's still important to be there for them, which I thought was a nice and endearing message. And on the other side of that, I really like what we see with Murda and Lucy in this episode just in general, not just the four kids version, but in this version, Myrna says how they would never let a witch win, and Lucy says that things are going to change. So this really hints at a societal issue in magics where witches are looked down upon, which was definitely present in the original, but it was kind of unspoken. And it makes sense considering the reputation that they have, but as we'll see later as the series progresses, this is not true. Not all witches are bad. And I thought it was really interesting how they brought up this sort of idea here because it's something that is definitely worthy of discussion and it does reflect real life issues as well. So that was something that I really liked seeing in this episode. 
A change that happened uh, here was with the Trix's motivation. Originally, Icy wanted to help Lucy basically just to mess with her. She was gonna help her become beautiful and participate and then at the very last minute snatch it away so that she'd be humiliated in front of everyone, which was horrible but very on brand for her character because she's supposed to be evil. In this version, I guess they thought that was a little bit too mean, which uh, it's understandable. So now the tricks want to help Lucy so that Stella loses because it's apparently her dream. And instead of revealing Lucy's true self, they want to make her do their homework for a whole year, which I'm not really sure how I feel about this change. I understand why they made it because it was very bleak and was kind of painting a picture that anyone who doesn't look a certain way isn't gonna be perceived well, which is true to an extent, but they never really did anything to help Lucy when she was completely just uh, obliterated by everyone. So I can understand why they wanted to lessen that, but because of a change that happens later on, I don't completely agree with what they did. Uh, I guess you'll see what I mean in just a little bit, but I understand where they're coming from. Uh, once again, I really feel like the Forkas writers were trying to diffuse the pageant aspect of this as much as they could. Flora gives Stella something to enhance her natural beauty, and they mention this many times throughout the contest as well, which... I'm not really going to argue right now whether pageants are ethical or not, but I think they approached it as best as they possibly could. But to lighten things up a little bit, there was a hilarious line that was actually repeated twice. <laughs> While Stella's getting ready, she says, I think, or at least I thought, jokingly, that when she wins, she plans to help underprivileged princesses. <laughs> which completely went over my head for a few seconds. But then when I thought about it, that is kind of a bit of an oxymoron there. I'm not saying that people who are wealthy don't have their own issues and problems. And technically, just because you're royal doesn't mean that you have wealth. Maybe there was some sort of like huge disaster that wiped out almost an entire planet, similar to Bloom. Stuff happens, but taking it as it is is a really hilarious line. And apparently she wasn't joking because later on, when she does win, <laughs> she says the exact same thing and no one bats an eye, which I found really funny. But uh, getting back on track here for a little bit, let's go over the scene that was controversial and how it was changed. So in this version, the contestant's voice was changed instead of her hair changing. It was made like super high pitched. I didn't know what was going on at first, so I laughed audibly pretty loud at the voice performance because I thought Forkus was just being extra for no reason, but that wasn't the case. It was a spell gone wrong, and it wasn't just that that was changed. <laughs> Forkus went out of their way to alleviate any possible problems with the scene. She's told that she still has her looks. Stella says that's awful, but she means it's awful what happened, not your voice, and even tries to console her when she starts crying, saying that maybe the judges won't notice. So, yeah, pretty much any issue that anyone could probably find with this scene was completely alleviated in this version, so I really don't think there is any reason to skip it if you're watching this, so... Yeah, that's great. This was a lot more fun than I was expecting it to be as an episode. Moving on from that, I really liked the aspect of the pageant itself. I didn't notice this at first, but the host is voiced by Dan Green, who also voices Sky, and he went completely in character for this and went out of his way and was super extra, and I loved it. He really elevated the episode. Also felt like the music change for the pageant also fit the contest way better. And it was just really fun once we got to the actual contest, surprisingly. But there's a subplot that's introduced that wasn't in the original that I need to bring up. So Bloom decides that something's off about Lucy, who's transformed right now. 
because she was acting indifferent, and people from Popularis, where she claims to be from, are always friendly, <laughs> which really, really was funny to me that Bloom was being so petty and kind of, in a way, profiling. I, I don't know if that's the right word, but basically just using stereotypes to justify feeling suspicious about her, and I don't think she was in the right in this case. She was right in the fact that there was something afoot, but the way that her brain got there wasn't justified, in my opinion. So unfortunately, this is not a good look for Bloom in this episode, and unfortunately, it only gets worse. But before we talk about that, um, one thing that's also pretty notable is the fact that in general this episode was made more family friendly. There was one scene where there was sultry um, music playing as one of the contestants walked down and they completely changed the music there so we don't get that feeling at all. And there, if I remember correctly, there was also a scene where briefly <laughs> there was a panty shot for Stormy, which I don't... Uh, I can't remember. I don't think we get too many of those in a Winx Club. Definitely not the newer stuff, I assume. But I guess it happened every once in a while in the original, and it was cut out in this version. So yeah, any issues that people have really had with this episode, once again, I've said it multiple times, is really not present in this version. So take that as you will. But on a positive note, Mean Girls is back! They play it during a montage where the tricks just start messing with the competition just for fun. Whereas in the original, they were getting rid of the competition to make sure that Lucy won so they could ruin her day. But that isn't what's happening here. <laughs> They're just being evil just for the heck of it. But the montage is great. The song is still a bop, so that was a fun scene. Another thing that I found pretty funny is how when Lucy performs ballet, to refer to it as hair ballet. Um, I guess they did that because her hair was so long and flowing. And they were also trying to add more background information about each of the contestants and their home planets, which I thought was actually pretty interesting. So for example, multiple contestants did regional dances to show off pride for where they're from, which I thought was a really cool addition. But hair ballet was a bit silly to me, but it works and it looks great. Uh, but unfortunately, not all good things can last. Back to the Bloom subplot, Bloom is still suspicious, and she suspects that Lucy is using magic. So, she, she, not the tricks, she <laughs> undoes the spell on Lucy, which I did not see that one coming at all. And I personally do not like that change. <laughs> it made Bloom be the total villain for no reason, just when she was doing so good in the past episode too. She completely devastated Lucy, who was super insecure about her looks and only wanted to be accepted by the people around her. Granted, in this version, no one insults her for her appearance. It's more of the fact that she's an outcast than anything, but still. <laughs> The scene was devastating in the original because it was clearly because of her looks that she was disqualified and also the magic thing too. But, you know, that's why people were upset because of the way that she looked and the tricks did it on purpose to completely ruin her. But in this version, it's Bloom who eviscerates her and it's just god awful. And on top of that, the tricks say how they're still gonna make her do her homework. So honestly, I don't know which one's worse for Lucy, but either way, I felt like it made more sense for the tricks to be the evil ones rather than Bloom. So yeah, not a change that I was too happy with. But after the pageant is won, it is time for the exam. And in this version, for some reason, she passes, and Palladium buys that she studied and didn't just cram. Whereas she failed originally because it was super obvious how she crammed and that she wasn't prepared at all. Small change, but I'm not really sure why they did that. Maybe to end it on more of a positive note? I don't know. But now you know that it happened. And those are all my notes for that episode. So... 
Yeah, I was really surprised by this episode. I knew that four kids made some changes to make it more appropriate for their intended audience, but I really enjoyed this episode because honestly, growing up, this was one of my favorites because of just the antics that Stella gets into and we get to see a part of like the culture behind the magic's universe and I just thought it was interesting as well and as heartbreaking as it was I liked the subplot that we had with Lucy and Murda because it showed just how much of a problem that there was in the fact that Lucy was treated differently because of the way that she looked. And although there wasn't a happy ending for her, unless you count her friendship with Murda becoming good later on, even despite the fact that it was all gloomy, I thought it was nice that they acknowledged that this is something that happens. So although the episode does have its problems, as I already mentioned, I never really skip over it personally, and there are aspects that I like about it. Once again, it's up to you to feel however you feel about the episode, but as you've just heard, if you have been avoiding it for whatever reason, then I really suggest checking out this version because it doesn't have any of the aforementioned issues that the original does, and it still has the same spirit. So I really do urge you to check it out, because there's still some good stuff in there, in my opinion. And that's a wrap, guys. <laughs> Sorry if my voice is kind of raspy. I guess it's kind of weak from all the stuff that I've been doing lately, so I definitely need to start wrapping up here. I hope that you enjoyed this installment, and I will see you guys next time, where we go over episode 13 and 14 of the season 1 4 Kids Wink Stub. Before I sign off here, I also want to give a shout out to my patrons. A huge thank you to Toddy Fantasy. The support means a lot to me. I know that life's not only sunshine and rainbows, but I hope I'm able to bring some sort of positivity your way. I'll see you guys in the next one, and don't forget to keep a little magic in your life.